UCLA players are threatening a mutiny, basically. Uh, I think that's probably the best way to put it. Uh, This is from the, the LA Times. They're reporting that UCLA football players held a team meeting last night and that after it, 30 of them supported a document that requests a third-party health official to oversee COVID-19 prevention protocols because they do not trust the program to be administered by Chip Kelly. Uh, Here is the quote. The document reviewed by the Los Angeles Times asserts that players do not trust uh, Coach Chip Kelly's program to act in their best interest, particularly in regard to their health, a realm where it says UCLA has, quote, perpetually, uh, excuse me, perpetually failed us, citing neglected and mismanaged injury cases. The document does not provide examples. Uh, The story continues with the threat to boycott essentially all ancillary program activities if their demands are not met. Quote, these demands reflect our call for an environment in which we do not feel pressured to return to competition, and if we choose not to return, that our decision will be respected. If our demands are not met, we will refrain from booster events, recruiting events, and all football-related promotional activities. Now, this is... For a team to not trust their head coach, that is pretty far out there. To have 30 members of an 85-man roster that don't trust the coach enough to go through these health issues, whatever it is, the health protocols. That's a pretty big deal, right? Yeah, that's pretty damning. Like, I, we, we've we heard this kind of stuff before, right? It, all of this, um, here, before we go further, let me jump into the chat here. Ben said, do you think Ole Miss will change their name? I don't think so. UNLV might, even though they're not the same Rebels. Uh, I think 100% Ole Miss will end up changing their name eventually. I don't think it's going to be soon. Um, but... Hey, can we address the UNLV thing real quick? Yeah, uh, let me let me finish these right quick, and then we'll. I want to we'll come attack. back to that. Yeah, uh, I agree with uh, Michael Fritz said. I agree with doing what's right, and flags and statues don't affect my life at all. I just don't agree with doing things based on appeasing any group of people on either side of the issue. Yeah, I, yeah, I can, I'm not trying to. I'm not doing it because I, I think it appeases one side and pisses off another. I, I, I'm doing it strictly because I believe it's the right thing to do. Also, anyone who tells me. That's our history. That's our history. That's our history. Nobody has ever learned history from a statue. No, nope. not one, not one family member of mine that loves the Confederacy has ever walked by one of the statues and read the plaque. Okay. Agreed. It is just, it is just never happened. You learn history through books. Okay. That's where we learn sure. history from, not statues. Uh, with that said, Ben said UNLV are like trailblazers or something, or maybe just rebels as in the nut jobs in Vegas. Uh and then I'll, I'll get to Michael's other comment regarding the uh, UCLA thing here momentarily. Uh, let's, Michael said, got to run. We'll watch the rest later. Thanks, guys. Michael, appreciate you. Um, so, Ben, with his UNLV, now before we get to, these are two completely different topics. Let's, yeah. let's finish the UCLA issue. UCLA, right now, having, having this, you're right, it is incredibly damning. Chip Kelly from what he was at Oregon to the first couple of years at Philadelphia when he was with the Eagles, the drop-off from there is massive, right? Everybody thought that when he came back to college football, he was going to be a giant. He is one of the most analytical coaches out there. He takes all these different types of data and puts them all together and tries to do what is best for his program. However, he has always seemed to clash with his players. For whatever reason. Now, you brought up an interesting topic. Um, uh, did we lose Chris? Nope. Nope, we got him. All right. You froze, it, it looked up, like you froze, froze up. up a couple times, but I got you. Keep going. Okay. So, with that said, what is it about Chip Kelly that causes all of this tension? What? It, I, don't, I don't have a clue. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not in the locker room. But that's the issue is we're not in the locker room, Gary. You're not yeah. going to know, and I'm not going to know. I know this. He wasn't liked in Philly, even though he won in Philly. Okay. He did really well in Philadelphia, by the way. He he was ran out of Philly strictly on his first bad year ever there, strictly because the players didn't like him, because they came from the most player friendly coach, maybe in NFL history under Andy Reid. Not a knock. Andy Reid's an elite level great coach, but they went from a super player friendly coach to a coach that is 
basically a computer, a robot. He doesn't care about your feelings. He doesn't care how your family's doing. He doesn't want to talk. He wants to talk to you about your football. And he asked them to do really hard things, okay? He demanded of them hard things, and they didn't like it. And they went on to Twitter, and they went on to TV shows, and they complained about it. And he got this rap for being an asshole, which he probably is. But but yeah. that's where it all started. Somehow he tailspanned from that, tailspun, tailsp- anyway, tailspended <laughs> from that all the way to, I know that's not right. Listen, Mississippi education, I know that's not right. I think it's, I think it's tailspun. Tailspun all the way from that to. <laughs> it doesn't sound right. Can't, <laughs> can't win at UCLA. It's pretty insane. It's Now, it's I do remarkable. believe. Now, me and you differ on this. I think UCLA might get out recruited by 20 other schools just in the state of California alone. Uh, Now, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say they will be out recruited by 20 schools from the Midwest back. Just in California alone. Now, I'm not talking about 20 schools in California that recruit them. I'm talking 20 other schools come in and take the best players in California that they're not able to get. You might they're be not right just getting out recruited by UCL or by USC and Oregon and other Pac-12 schools. Notre Dame's coming in there. LSU, Bama, Clemson are coming in there. Ohio yeah. State are coming in there and taking kids. Texas, Texas A&M coming in there and taking kids at will too. I mean, at will. Yeah. Uh, now, at at the same time, uh, that is recruiting. That is what a coach's job is. Like that's a major part Gary, of the job. You and I, but so this is where we disagree. You and I both know that recruiting is all about money. And it's if not, he's not working with the recruiting budget, the recruiting budget that he had at Oregon, and we know he's not, then he can't recruit. If you drop Nick Saban or Coach O into UCLA, and he had to, they had to work with the budget. Chip Kelly has to work with, they're not pulling the kids they're pulling right now. You're right. It does take an entire buy-in from the Why school. are these kids leaving there and going to Columbus, Ohio? Why are they leaving Los Angeles to go play football at Columbus, Ohio? I, I've I been suppose. to Columbus. It sucks. Uh, yeah, but you can win there. No, I, I, no, none of these kids don't give a shit about winning. Uh, you win, you get to the NFL. Like, that's... No, UCLA can recruit talent. They, you can get money from – you can make it to the NFL from UCLA. So then why do kids – It's those like three I, years in college, they want to get paid $200,000 to play football. Okay, okay, okay. I, I'm with you. Either and UCLA is dropping them fifty grand because that's the level they recruit on. Um, let's see. Michael said, if you don't trust the coach, go play somewhere else. I'm sure Chip Kelly isn't the only coach that needs to be watched. You can't give in to demands. Well, here's the deal. They signed their letter of intent. They came to the school there. However, if the injuries and whatnot have been treated incorrectly, if everything has well, been misdiagnosed Well, they got to be able to give whatnot, references. That's one thing that they said this, but then they weren't able to, to give, like, an account. They weren't able to say, Frank played with a broken foot all last year. Frank, tell them about your broken foot, and yeah. nobody reported it. Like, they were able to give zero references. They just said he overlooks injuries. You got to be able to give us some kind of, Give us an example of one time it happened. The only the only issue that I have here is that it is thirty kids. That is a I get, lot. No, no, no. It's damning. Yeah, it's damning. It's it is a lot. Uh, Joseph Gomez said uh, said they changed the NFL rules to slow down the Eagles and basically ran them out of the NFL. Yep. Did they? No, I agree with that. No, I actually think that's true. I actually think that's true. I think enough teams complained when Chip got there and was doing things differently. And and I think I think a lot of people didn't like it. Hey, Ben said, uh, "Isn't he isn't uh, first off? Isn't he an accused racist by Eagles players?" I don't remember that. I don't. I remember Shady McCoy and him got into it, and it was literally over Shady going out all the time and not resting because he was very big on sleep and recovery. Sleep and recovery, which science has proven. Sleep is the number one way to get more recovery. True. And Shady had a pretty active nightlife. And I, now that could have been like the racist thing that happened. And it could be legit racism that happened. I don't remember that. I just I, I remember, remember him and Sh- Riley Cooper him. was on the team. Now, Riley um, Cooper was a racist, but Riley Cooper was there under Andy Reid. Andy Reid drafted and brought him in. Yeah. He just was on the team for Chip. No, but it, but that, that whole incident with Riley Cooper happened under happened Chip Kelly. Under Chip. That's right. And That's they right. kept him on the team. And That's right. 
But you Chip know, wasn't a GM there. Howie Roseman's no. the GM. Yeah, yeah that's, no, 100%. Not, that's not the head coach's decision. Uh, Michael said, oh, Ben uh, corrected us, by the way. It was he went into a tailspin. Yeah. Not he okay. tailspun. He went that's, into okay. a tailspin. That's, fine. that's <laughs> the right way to say it. That sounds right. That's a, Yeah, we're from Mississippi. Like, don't accuse us of being smart here. I've Come got on. a bit about Mississippi's education one day that I'll let out into the world. <laughs> Michael Fritz said, let me make it clear I'm not a fan of Chip Kelly. Uh, Jose said, Kelly not liked in college or the NFL. He should quit. Um, and then Matt Miller said, d said, uh, said he was, wait, hold on. He said, d said he was because of the whole gang thing. He was he was racist because of the whole gang thing. I don't know the gang thing that happened. But. Oh, Joseph uh, Joseph jumped back in and said NFL changed the amount of mandatory seconds between plays. Chip yes. wanted less than five seconds. NFL has it about ten. Feel free to check. Yep. I think yeah, I think you're actually right. Now that I'm no, I, no, I, I remember that. No, I think yeah. that happened. I actually think that was a calculated yeah, you, decision that happened. You talked to me about that. That's right. Like yep. it, it, college football yep. did the same thing. Like they they slowed it down so the defenses actually had a chance. Yeah. Um, you want to know who made that happen? Uh, tell me. Oh, that, that was Nick Saban. Saban. That was Saban. Yeah. No, you're 100% right. Hundred percent bitching. It's not safe for these kids to play a hundred snaps a game. They're gonna die out there. Oh, here we like, go. And Matt Miller. About them dying. Matt Miller said Deshaun Jackson was accused of being in a gang by Chip Kelly. That's okay. That might have been it. But I know he got into it with Shady McCoy. I yeah. absolutely know he got into it with Shady. It's uh, it's an interesting situation I, I think that chip kelly if it were not for the pandemic he would have been fired after this season i don't think they're going to be very good this year uh i don't think they'll be very good the next year i think what he does has been caught up to and he has not adapt like he adapts as far as uh too, scientific too many data coaches and whatnot. do what he used to do right he, he did it sucks that he was the originator of it not originator but he kind of perfected it at oregon yes um and and now so many people have ripped it off that their version of it is better than his version of it. And that's, it's, it's a little sad to see that, but it's kind of the way of the world. I mean, Henry Ford made the greatest car ever made and then everybody ripped off his design and now and fixed a it lot to of be people better. make better cars than him. And it's just, you know, the collective is sometimes a lot better than the individual. And yes, it's gone through the collective minds of of many other people. It's it's interesting. We're going to see exactly what happens with UCLA. But I always players... like Chip. I don't know why. I want him to be better than he is now. Um, you know, I don't remember so, him being racist. I just remember him getting into a sh- Shady McCoy, and that that never hurt my feelings at all. I, I thought that guy was an asshole while a great player. Joseph Gomez brick. jumped in and said, "I'm waiting on Chris's impression of Gruden." No, that won't happen. <laughs> F that guy. Chris hates Gruden with everything in his being. He ruined my favorite television show for a decade. It's not like they went through one or two bad seasons and then we got rid of some crappy writers and got some new people in. No, 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 no. No, no, no. My favorite television show in the world, that appointment viewing, no matter where I am in life, Monday Night Football, he ruined for over 10 years. Yeah. Screw that guy. (laughs) <laughs> and to think, Chris was actually a little bit of a, a Las Vegas Raiders fan before they even moved to Las oh, Vegas. As soon as I, Jack Del B, I was going to have a black Jack jersey. I am, I was in, baby. River Jack Del Rio Jack. leading the Raiders. I was in. And instead, it changed. Oh, that's what happened. That's that what is. happened to you. Flip All that right. switch. Let's, uh, yeah. oh, well, we were going to talk about the UNLV thing. Um, oh, I'll give two minutes on this. I don't understand that. Yes, they're called Rebels and. The Confederacy were called rebels. Weren't they? I was always under the impression that like the West people were like the 49er rebels, like the the like those who gold were rebellious rush. and reaching out for the gold rush and going out for riches and living from the wild, wild west and had nothing to do with Confederacy. That's I what I thought. That? No, no, I, I think you're right. I, I think uh I think that. Like, anything that has to do with Rebels, they're going to associate. And at UNLV, it's a little bit easier to change the mascot. We know at Ole Miss, it is Rebels no, as far I, as no, Confederate. No, 100%, I yeah. know what Ole Misses means. That's why I got no beef with changing that and fighting that. No problem. Yeah, boom. But, hey, Ben jumps in. By the way, he said Nevada was a union state. 
Yes. Who like, knew? What what if what if the rebel was like a biker rebel? Like, you know, I mean, yeah, biker gangs are pretty horrible people and they murder a lot of folks and, and traffic of people and do a lot of terrible things. But like if it was that, would we be canceling them? Because I, I just don't, oh. I just always worked under the assumption that it was more that go west young man rebellious lifestyle and not a southern rebel thing. I just thought I never once in my mind thought Oh, that's a. You know, I, I'll say this: they stole like, that rebel from us. I'm not against changing mascots, right? I don't think that the name of a of a school's football team or whatever really matters in the grand scheme of things. So it's whatever. Oh, no, if you want to change it, that's fine. You're talking to a guy but, who, who who really hates mascots, by the way. So <laughs> Ben is making fun of how I say Nevada. Uh, is it Nevada? Is it? Oh no, ben no, no. We are going to continue to say Nevada. I'll say Nevada. Like it, it is you say is. Nevada, you're not welcome around here. This, it, maybe this is the reason Southern <laughs> hospitality is not a real thing. Either way, in my house with that type of language. Yeah, Nevada was a union state. I'm gonna say you Nevada. say Colorado, yeah. Colorado. No, sir. No, sir. Like, hey, I, I I call a Chevy a Silverado. So well, that's different. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, all right. I'm I'm all about changing mascots if you think that it needs to be changed. Right? Yeah. That is what it is. Whatever. I, but you just change it just because. It's boring. You yeah. Know, I, you I can, don't give a shit. That would be perfectly fine. I don't care what you do with it. Like, if you want to change Ole Miss, like, you're going to have to fight a bunch of people that have been there forever and ever and ever. And these are the people that actually put the money into the school, right? That's I would say that's this, a big though, part of it. There's a lot of people that are our age and younger, which is the new money coming into the school. Yep. And the future money coming into the school that have no positive connotation to Ole Miss, and if they changed it tomorrow, would not care. Agreed. Agreed. Would not care. Uh, I will say this. The fact that we don't look at other things such as uh, hurricanes or uh, Toledo, whatever, the Rocket. well, the Rockets aren't anything, but uh, what's uh, the Tulsa Golden Hurricanes, you know, the Tulane Green Wave, all that kind of stuff. Like, that kind of stuff also has hurt people in the past, Nobody even thinks twice about that. It's not the okay, same. Cl- okay, Clay Travis. It's not, I'm not the doing, same. I'm not having this conversation. This is Clay ridiculous. Travis. What are you talking about? That is a that is a Clayton Travis argument right there. But I, I, I'm, I'm looking at it from that perspective. I heard it of, from his mouth. That's ridiculous. That is the most asinine thing on the planet. They're mascots. Okay. Yes. They're, ma- they're just mascots. Like just make them dogs and and different animals and stuff. Like that's no, all. No, but I'm that's a, at some point in time you can't do that because then this animal is offensive to these. No, you just just it's just a mascot. Okay, it's just a mascot. It's a, yeah, the all whole right? thing is just whatever. If, if somebody is actually offended, nobody has ever shown up to be offended by hurricanes, all right? Hurricanes are a thing that happen, and nobody's offended by them. It's just a thing that happens, okay? But, like, yes, people are actually offended by rebels because of what it actually means. I get that. Change it. Is Ole and Miss if you want to only... change your mascot just because we've had the same mascot for 50 years and we think we want to change it, that's fine, too. All right? Is Ole Miss the care. only, like, Confederate mascot that's yes. left? Yes. I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy. I like, would think so, yes. All the other offensive mascots are Native American mascots. Like the, the Seminoles and et cetera, et cetera. The Utes right? and, yeah. Uh, he said, uh, ben said, Hurricane does not have a brain. That's a good That's point. Right. Hurricanes, whatever. Uh, and then he said, those are not even, oh, well, he was talking about the Hurricanes. Those are not even comparable. He said, the Ole Miss Black Bear mascot, that flopped. Yeah, they, they've switched it over recently to the uh, Land Shark. <laughs> that's not even an official thing. That's just a student. Well, that's what the thing. that's what the actual mascot is. It's the rebels, but it's a a land shark. They have right? a, a mascot of a of a, a shark, shark that walks that, around on two that legs. has two feet. <laughs> because that makes sense. It's it's from when uh uh God was it Houston Nut that was there when the defense was yes, so good and they started the that whole Jesus thing. H. Yeah, Christ. Uh, he said Michael jumped in and said or have cool shit like have a real buffalo run out. Shout out Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, listen, I, I, I like live. So I hate mascots. Okay. I hate, and Mike, the tiger, like the Mike, the mascot, Mike, he's kind of a cool mask. He's still a mascot. Okay. Mascots are for children. I do not believe college campuses are a place for children. This is a different belief system that I have that most other people have. I do not want your nine year old hanging around me when I'm at a tailgate getting shitty. Okay. That is, that is a me problem, not a you problem, but it's how I feel and what I think. Okay, we go to professional football f- games, professional basketball games. Those should be for everybody. They're for families. 
college sports should be for 18 and older because grown up things happen on college campuses. So I don't need something okay. soft and cuddly. Now, if you have a real bear, then that's cool. Now, while the animal rights people are going to come after us, I, I think Bebo is a cool mascot. I think I think the, the 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 buffalo is a super cool mascot. Like I think live Mike the tiger is a cool Tom the tiger of Memphis, cool mascot. Live mascots, I'm all for. That war yeah. eagle that that's at Auburn, one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. I will life. agree with that. I will agree like, with that. Like super cool. We love Ugga. We love Smokey. Like these are live mascots. You got all the sport in the world for me. Uh, ben said, I like the live <laughs> boar at Arkansas. He's my favorite. <laughs> the Razorback. And then uh, uh, Carolina the has a live rooster. Yeah, a Gamecock. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that Gamecock is. Listen, that Gamecock will fuck you up. I have been around big turkeys, uh, roosters before. David Madison jumps in and said, yeah, this whole conversation smacks of white privilege. Of course you don't remember Chip Kelly's racism. I really don't remember okay. I, I just don't remember it. I don't. I, I mean, that's how many years has that been since he was a with long the Eagles? Time ago. I mean, good gracious, I don't remember. I'm not saying so, I don't suffer from white privilege. I'm just saying that I don't know anything. Of, I just don't remember that. Yeah, we're willing to listen, David. If you want to keep jumping in, you know, I'm I'm totally in here. But uh, you know, I yeah, we probably are white privilege, but I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Like I don't know. I'll about say this: the, the me Chip not Kelly remembering stuff. Chip Kelly being racist is not when he lasted in the NFL for five minutes. I don't. Yeah. I don't know that that's the example of my white privilege. Yeah, I, I agree. All right, so let's let's dive off of this. Let's jump into the last topic of the day. Um, where's my time? There we go. All right. So, <laughs> Michael said Gary and Chris have that white privilege. I suppose that we do, but that's okay. Um, we're trying to get better. Let's dive into 